1985, and I can't remember how I heard of this book, but Harold McGee uh, is an English lecturer, <clears throat> taught English at Stanford University, and he wanted to write a book on the science of everyday life. So he thought, what more every day than eating, cooking and eating? So he wrote this book, and it's, it's a science of cooking as opposed to food science. So food science, you go to university, you get a degree in some kind of bioscience, and then you go, for example, work for an ice cream company to see how much air you can incorporate into an ice cream, looking at the structure. This is the science of cooking, so why do eggs make your souffles rise? What happens if we put flour, saturate flour with water when we're making a dough? And you know, that kind of stuff that relates to the, to the cook. There was still enough of the book that I found complicated. Um, I have been called a scientist on many occasions over the years. I failed my O-level chemistry. I completely failed it. I was rubbish. I mean, it was like trying to learn Chinese. Actually, that would have probably been easier, to be honest, because of no diagrams. Actually, they do. Chinese writing. Anyway, I... Um, yes, yeah, since then, I learned, I've learned my science through cooking. And... <clears throat> You know, involved in lots of papers and stuff like that, but that, pure, that was purely cooking. The science, the science side of it, I just found very. I don't say I actually found it too difficult. I think it just shows that if you find something that you can, you can get interested in, that grabs you, pulls you in, and Harold's book did that, definitely. Um, but it also did something that changed the way that I approached everything and that was in the, in the book he makes a statement where he says brownie meat doesn't keep in the juices uh, but reading that was, was, was a complete it flew in the face of everything that I'd read I'd heard I saw you know the chef said I'm going to seal the juices in and how I went on to say that if you could if, a, if brown, by browning meat you could keep the juices in it would be impossible to have a world that would be state because you brown the meat so the juices can't possibly come out in fact, you think about it, meat, 70% plus water. You have a hot pan with oil in. Think of that meat as a wet sponge. A sponge that's 70% saturated with water. <clears throat> so when you chuck it in a really hot pan, it sizzles. It's water sizzles. It's the water coming out of the sponge or coming out of the meat. And it's as simple as the longer you cook the piece of meat and the higher the temperature you cook it to, the more the proteins contract, just like scrambling eggs. As they contract that sponge, they just squeeze the water out. And that is why a well done piece of steak is 40% lighter than a rare one or a blue one. And you go, duh. <laughs> but it's only when somebody tells you. And at that moment, then I thought, how many things, how many other things that I've read over the years that I've just taken as gospel, how many of those are, are true? So I just questioned everything. And I'd say if I had one mantra, one strap line, one approach that will that will for everything I do it would be that in fact I'm lucky enough I've got a coat of arms now and they asked me either Latin or <clears throat> or English what would you, you have to you have to have a coat under the shield and that's what I put there question everything now you might question something and it turns out to be you question it and it makes sense not everything that's you know things evolve things that have been tried and tested for hundreds of years or longer of years are still Accepted, but if you don't question anything, don't, if you don't question everything, you don't move on, you don't learn, you don't evolve.